Good morning to you, viewers. Well, as reactions continue to trail the planned nationwide youth protests slated for August 1st over rising cost of living and economic hardship, a former spokesperson for the Atiku Abubakar campaign in the 2023 elections, Daniel Bwala, said that some foreign interests are taking advantage of the political climate in the country to promote the nationwide protest. Bwala spoke in Abuja on Wednesday when he visited President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the Aso Rock Villa. Let's take a look. I believe that... Uh... Uh, that there is, an, to a large extent, the element of politics. Uh, my belief that it even transcends the country. There, must, there, will be, there would have been foreign interest, but taking advantage of the poor political climate. Because the fact of hunger and suffering, we know that everybody in Nigeria acknowledges that there is suffering. And the suffering did not start last year. We've been dealing with that issue you know, of suffering, you know, lack of employment. We're talking about entrepreneurship. Virtually every aspect of economy and security is what we have always been pushing the envelope and see how we can attain a better place. But suddenly, the conversation, if you see the mainstream and the social media, is all about they want to bring the government down. President Bola Tinibu must really resign. Once you hear that kind of talk and language, then you don't need somebody to interpret that there is a political connotation. You must be aware that people have been holding meetings saying they want to unseat the president. By our constitution, he has four years and it's renewable for another term of four years. All right, I love that he uh, quoted the Constitution there. He's very aware that, you know, protest is our constitutional rights as well. But there he goes with the Emilokong cap. I mean, he's fully an APC member, absolutely. But you know, the conversation has been going on here in Lagos as well. There are, you know, conversations around trying to stop the nationwide protest, I mean, in Lagos, because it's going to go around 36 states. And we see this tweet from Lagospedia. They wrote uh, a public announcement. Attention, residents and visitors of Lagos, please be informed that the Oro Festival will be observed in various communities across Lagos from the 1st of August to August 15th. This traditional Yoruba cultural event involves significant rituals. Retweet for awareness. Of course, you know this has garnered so many reactions. I believe the Lagos state government has also responded saying that as the youth wants to come out to protest, I mean, these uh, our ritualists also are allowed to protest. But let me take some reactions. This is from... In Kiru, who wrote, uh, to prevent voters from voting, they declared Oro Festival in Lagos on the 25th of February 2023 to prevent protests against bad governance. They declared Oro Festival from 1st August to 14th August. Oro government. <laughs> but the show must go on. Another Twitter user, there goes, uh, Oro Festival in Lagos now allegedly scheduled for the first two weeks of August, the exact same period of the planned protests by the youth. Chai! So after turning billionaires to podcasters, this government, don't they turn our ancestors to political jobbers? God, I beg you, Dr. Abati, God, I beg you, but obviously this is the conversation we've been having. Okay, two quick things. You, I would like for you to actually address the Oro Festival because I want to know what it means in terms of those dates that are set up for, for the festival. Okay, the yes, Oro Festival exactly. in Yoruba land, mm -hmm. in many communities where they have the Oro cult, mm -hmm. is used to cleanse the community, right. to drive away evil spirits, mm -hmm. and sometimes the Oro... A uh, mask can be brought out uh, on special occasions, yes. like when the uh, traditional ruler of the community mm -hmm. uh, dies. However, the oro, you know, does not usually come out in daytime. In the daytime, it's okay. usually at night. Okay. And the oro does not target women. Uh, does not target men. Mm -hmm. It targets only yeah. women because women are asked not to come out at particular uh, types of the day. Well, I can't say more than that. I can't go in, into any detail beyond that. But what is suspicious mm -hmm. about this is the political dimension to <laughs> yeah, it. Absolutely. The uh, politics of it is that they are doing this now to coincide with uh, the planned uh, 10 days of rage uh, that uh, the protesters are talking about. The last time this was done, this ritual approach was taken to uh, Nigerian politics, was during the 2023 general election. Mm -hmm. When in certain communities in Lagos, you know, the uh, traditionalists said people should not come out because they will bring out the Oro Festival. And in fact, they, they placed uh, uh, sacrificial offerings at strategic locations yeah. in uh, yeah, Lagos I State. That, yeah. So the argument that, uh, you know, traditional worshippers also have their right, yes, but nobody yeah. Yeah. has absolute rights under the Constitution. Uh, uh, in the Constitution, Section 45, I think, you know, talks about freedom of uh, religion, freedom of, uh, of worship. But you cannot say you are doing your freedom of worship and you will shut down Lagos State. Mm -hmm. You cannot shut down Lagos State. Okay. That would be abusing Absolutely. the rights of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is to scare people. This is a traditional <laughs> contribution to the do not protest yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thing that we have been seeing. Right. As for Daniel Bwala. Yes. Daniel Bwala has been on this uh, table, uh, you know, on many occasions. First, he was uh, in the Atiku camp in People's Democratic Party. Yeah. And at that time, he was campaigning Vigorously 
against the APC and against uh, Ashwa Jubala yeah. But now that uh, Ashwa Tinubu uh, is a uh, president, he has seen the light like Saul yeah. on his way to Damascus. <laughs> and he says now, you know, that he has seen the light. Yeah. He's now committed to promoting mm -hmm. President Tinubu. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, very soon, mm -hmm. his spirit, like Felicia Ibu spirit, you know, has also left where it was. His, his own spirit yeah. is now in the uh, a APC, yeah. like uh, Philip Shaibu's yeah. uh, spirit also. So we see all this, uh, you know, uh, political, oh, yeah. where I don't want to use yeah. an unfair, you know, phrase. Right. You know, we see them jumping from one place to the other. What is amazing is the energy, the enthusiasm with which Nigerian politicians defend one position today, and then two, three months down the line, they have changed. They are singing uh, another thing yeah. with them. In fact, I won't be surprised if by the end of this year yeah. something changes yeah. and you find some of them also changing. Right. But I would like to end with uh, Dan Webola's uh, favorite phrase in Yoruba. He used to say on this thing, Kokoroto Njefo, Inu Efoluwa. Kokoroto Njefo, Inu So now uh, it looks like Dan Webola has gone to eat uh, Efo in the APC. But there's no Kokoro. <laughs> well, well, you will tell well, us. Well, you know, I mean, still on the protest. I mean, I know I loved your um, input, Dr. Bati, when you talked about, you know, um, avoiding anarchy. And, you know, we've seen this protest and the flyers that have been going around. And most of these protests are the flyers that we have seen. They say it's to end bad governance. I mean, we've seen these protest flyers going around. They've done them in different languages. And when you hear um, the presidency come out to, you know, attack certain group of people, or even Daniel Buala saying that it is political, then you, you know, try to, then you begin to wonder. But I think that some of those inputs are very important because the youth, they need to listen and know at this time is a crucial time for this government that have come up with their reform, reforms. But in, in any ways, uh, it, when we talk about engaging the youth, I'd like for you to discuss this. Well, while looking at measures to engage the youth, the wife of the president, Senator Uluremi Tinubu, yesterday urged the young people of Nigeria to embrace farming. Tinubu made the call while speaking with the management of the National Agricultural Development Fund. She emphasized the need for programs that engage the youth in farming despite urbanization challenges. Well, let's take a look. The young people are the future of any uh, idea we are putting on the table right now because there has, there, 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 there has been a you know, huge disconnect between what reality is and what fiction is or what social media is. Because in social media, they can build a castle in one minute, but that's not the reality. But if we begin to catch them young, I remember in my day, we have gardening schools. So, and that has always been there. But nowadays that most people who go to public schools are children from, you know, less privileged backgrounds. They don't live in an environment where there will be a garden or to say they want to grow something. But now they are smart gardening. You can build, you can do a garden in a bucket. All right, uh, Ayo, go ahead. Smart gardening is actually using technology to, um, for the purposes of farming. So it's actually quite capital intensive. Robots, AI is involved. So it's beyond just bucket farming. Um, in terms of the whole of, I mean, the, the entirety of her messaging, in terms of people taking on farming, young people, absolutely. When I was younger, um, in school, in primary school, it was part of the curriculum. Agricultural science was that we would actually go and plant. In fact, I remember for Junior Waik at the time, 50% um, was theory, 50% mm -hmm. was you actually having to plant something and understanding the soil. And hopefully to generate an interest and, like you mentioned, catching them young so that people can farm. However, the truth is that I was saying to talked about earlier today on air that we don't have time to farm because mm -hmm. we are going about pursuing our daily bread. I said, when you spend four hours in traffic, you go and look after your farm, you know, at the end of the day. So th there are practicalities that is not very immediate in terms of the solution for Nigerians. But in terms of how promoting agriculture and farming, absolutely, I think yes. it should be promoted, especially with young people catching them young. But in the same vein, it must be seen as an active part of our curriculum mm -hmm. and we should include it so that young people are made aware. Yes. But I'd like to say something about the first story, especially with regards to the Oro Festival. And I'm glad that we broke it down in terms of how it disproportionately affects women, that women are the ones who cannot move at a particular time. When this conversation comes up, I believe there's a white elephant that I'm surprised a lot of women groups have not come out to speak mm -hmm. about this, especially the fact that when the Constitution talks about freedom of movement, is it referring to just men in the Constitution, yeah. or are women included as well? Yeah. I understand that it's a traditional practice that's gone on for many years, mm -hmm. but we must also, as men and women, protect the interests of our girls, women, especially in the Southwest. Yeah. I know it's been happening, but we need to sometimes revise some of these things and see if it goes against the provisions of the Constitution. Yeah. As a woman, why should I be bad for moving at night because of... A, I, 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 that's, I don't understand that, and I'm surprised that yeah. people... I, 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 think, think, that, I think Dr. Batikan can, 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 can address that. If you want to come yeah. up. <laughs> you know, there's one song. Let me give you one old song. 
Just, I don't want to do it. Yeah, I Wait. You can come. You can come out. You can come out. Yeah. Wait, what, As a woman. As a, this is about culture. This yes, is about that's, that's ritual. What, that's, the, that's where that uh, plays in, uh, the difference between culture and, you know, um, rule of law. But that's, I mean, it depends, like Dr. Abati said. You can come out if you're not uh, part of the group of oral no, worshippers. Is that right? Out. Oh, well, you come out. <laughs> <laughs> but can you, can you come out? No, no, no. Dr. Abati. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, the, but then, then, the, the cultural, then that is a, a, a complete valid point. It's yeah. culture. It's, it's culture, ritual. religion. You know, but it's just that they are not using it for political purposes. No, yeah. To it intimidate be, people, yeah. to restrict people's right, movement right. unnecessarily, mm. even when it is not... Uh, required by yeah. tradition. Right. That's the abuse, yeah. you know, uh, that we can condemn. Yes. But I, I won't advise you as a woman <laughs> yeah. to come out okay. when you hear... But you're advising... Don't dare that. In summary, um, Adefemi, I think really about the protest, uh, we have seen the presidency come out to attack uh, Peter Obi's supporters. We have seen now Dana Buola saying that it is foreign interest and that it is political. I think, like we have said, the government need to also pay attention to the cries of the young people of yes. Nigeria who are really advocating and and to you know, try to end bad governance. We are talking about all these people, all these uh, uh, senators that are making so much money. Start from all that conversation. But in another development, Adifemi, hmm. Senate President Godzilla Babu appears to have missing.